Hi class, a pleasant day to all of you. This is Sir Dan and in this video we are going to discuss one of the lessons of the basic concept of corporation and this is regarding the illustration of the accounts of share capital. Okay, first let us enumerate the different accounts of share capital. And as we have learned share capital, we can also call that capital stock. And let us first define share capital. Share capital represents the equity of the corporation, which are divided into units called shares of stocks. The different accounts of share capital are as follows. The first one is authorized share capital. And authorized share capital is the maximum number of shares or amounts a corporation is allowed to issue. And next is subscribed shares. Subscribed shares is the portion of the authorized share capital that has been subscribed but not yet fully paid, meaning there's already a commitment or a subscription from an investor to buy shares of stock. But unfortunately, it's not yet fully paid. And next is issued share capital. Issued share capital, these are shares which have been sold and paid in full, whether in cash, property, or service by the investor. So this issued share capital represents ownership in the corporation evidenced by the stock certificate. So, if uh, the uh, stocks has already been paid in full, then it is, uh, the corporation has to issue the stock certificate to the investor, okay, to evidence the ownership. And next is share premium. Share premium is the excess proceeds over par value and share premium is computed as the issue price minus par value so the difference between the two is the share premium per unit or per share times the number of shares issued that will be your total share premium and next is outstanding shares Outstanding shares, these are issued shares which are in the hands of the shareholders. So basically, outstanding shares are issued shares. However, the difference would be outstanding shares, so these are issued shares. If there are treasury shares, we will deduct treasury shares from the issued shares and that will be your outstanding shares. So what are treasury shares? Treasury shares, these are issued shares that were acquired by the corporation and awaiting to be reissued at a later date. Meaning, okay, if uh, yeah, the corporation has issued the share capital, it will become an outstanding shares because it will already be in the hands, on the hands of the investors. And if the corporation bought the shares from investors, that will be called treasury shares, okay? So the treasury shares will be deducted from the issued shares, so that will be the number of shares outstanding why it is very important for us to determine the outstanding shares because in the declaration of the dividends the dividends will be based on outstanding shares okay so class to illustrate oh by the way treasury shares is equivalent to issued shares minus outstanding shares so let us have an illustration okay so that we can have a clear distinction of the share capital accounts. The Baker's Box Company is authorized to issue 2 million ordinary shares divided into 8,000 shares at par value of 250. So here we have 
authorized shared capital, we will use AC as the abbreviation for the authorized shared capital in our illustration. Okay, so we have two million. This is the authorized amount. Okay, for the company to uh, issue, and this two million is divided into eight thousand shares. So 2 million divided by 8,000 shares will give you a par value of 250. So in effect, if the par value is not given, you can compute the par value by dividing the amount of authorized capital with the number of shares, okay? And using your algebra, if one of this is not given, you can uh, compute the... Uh, not given uh, information using this formula, okay? If the authorized amount of capital is not given, you can multiply the number of shares with its par value. And if the number of shares is not given, you can divide the amount of authorized capital with the par value, okay? So from authorized share capital, there, there will be investors that will make a uh, commitment to purchase the shares and that is what you call subscription of shares and that will be the subscribed shares the investors will subscribe they will uh, subscribe would would mean uh, they have the intention to buy the, the shares and uh, to signify their intention they will make partial payment on the shares okay so after making a partial payment, then of course they will have to make full payment on what uh, was subscribed, okay? So if it is fully paid, that's the time that the company, that Baker's Box company, will issue the share to the subscriber, okay? Because it is already fully paid, okay? So that's, we will have an issued share capital. However, you don't need to subscribe uh, before you can uh, go to the issued share capital. If it is already fully paid, okay, you can now issue uh, the shares, okay? So from authorized share capital, if it is already fully paid, then you can issue the shares, okay? And you can issue it in two ways. Issue it at par, meaning the uh, sell the issue price or the selling price issue would also mean selling the baker's box is selling its share capital its shares okay so uh at par it means that the selling price we will use by the way uh, ip for the issue price sp for the selling price okay as the acronym as our acronym okay if we are saying that the shares of stock, the shares of stocks uh, are issued at par, it means that the selling price is same with par value. So in this case, we are selling our shares of stocks at 250, which is the par value. We can also issue the shares of stocks above par okay and above far above par would mean that the issue or selling price is more than par value example uh, the issue price should be more than 250 so in this case we have issued it at 275 okay by the way if the shares of stocks has a par value you cannot issue it below par meaning uh, you cannot sell the shares of stocks less than 250, okay? So, class, if, again, if uh, the issue price or the selling price is missing, you can compute that by uh, getting the amount of issued shares divided by the number of shares issued or sold. Okay, and if the amount of uh, issued 
shares is missing, you can multiply the number of shares issued with the selling price. And also, if the number of shares issued is missing, you can divide the amount of issued uh, shares with the selling price. Okay? So, class, the difference between, in this case, the par value of 250 and the selling price of 275, which is 25, that difference is called the share premium. Okay? So, uh, the total share premium, of course, this 25 is the share premium per share. If you will multiply that with the number of shares issued, you will get the total share premium. Okay? So, uh, class... Uh, this is the issued share capital, and then if you have issued this to the investor, then it will now be called, or it means if you have given the uh, stock certificate to the investors, then it is, now, it is now called outstanding shares. Outstanding shares, again, would mean that the uh, shares of stocks are on the hands of the investors. So, technically, issued share capital and outstanding shares are the same. The number of shares are the same. The difference is that if the corporation will uh, buy back, uh, will buy from the investors the shares, the corporation, it's the corporation buying the shares, then that is called treasury shares. Okay? So, Treasury shares, there is here, note that there is a open and close parenthesis because this is a reduction from the outstanding shares. It is called treasury shares because the corporation is buying it and as we know, the treasurer of the corporation is the custodian of the resources of the corporation. So part of the resources are the shares of it's stocks. So the treasury shares would mean that the shares are on the hands of the treasurer of the corporation. Okay, so uh, treasury shares, then uh, again, it will be held by corporation to be reissued on a later date. And class, um, we can compute the cost of treasury shares by knowing the amount of treasury shares divided by the number of shares of treasury shares. By the way, treasury shares can also be called treasury stocks, okay? And then if the amount of treasury stocks is not given, you can determine that by the number of shares of treasury stocks times the cost of treasury stocks. And then if you would compute the number of shares of treasury stocks, you just have to divide the amount, the total amount of treasury stock by the cost of treasury stocks. Okay, class. So in summary, class, the issued shares, which is this, the issued shares is equivalent to outstanding shares plus treasury shares. Or based on this, you can come up with the outstanding shares is equivalent to issued shares minus treasury shares. And treasury stocks is equivalent to issued share minus outstanding shares. Okay, class, so that's it. So if you have a question, please let me know. Okay, bye for now and hear me again with my other videos. Okay.